begin, I've hand dimensioned some pallet wood to 1x2 and 1x3 size and then cut them to length. Now my intention is that you use pre-bought lumber here in those sizes and cut them to length. To clean up your saw cuts, you're going to want to use a shooting board. This is a simple jig that holds your wood at a 90 degree angle to your plane and thus creates a perfect 90 degree edge for joining. Here you can see what a clean finish a shooting board and a sharp plane can leave. Now that the ends are nice and squared up and pretty, it's time to start on the joinery. I believe the best spot to uh, start here is going to be on this housing dado right here. So those will be cut into our 11 inch 1x3s to house these 1x2s. Like so. We're going to go about a quarter inch deep. So let's get that laid out. To make sure everything is centered, I'm checking back and forth with my marking gauge, making micro adjustments until the inset from both ends is identical. I've also added a quarter inch to account for the future tenon on the cross member. Now I mark my boards for the outside edge of the dado only. You'll notice I go less than an inch and a half across, so I don't have a marking gauge line showing on the finished product. After laying out the first board, I transfer my lines to the second board, so they are identical. Before chiseling, I want to deepen my marking gauge line, so I put my knife in the mark and then slide a straight edge, straight edge up against it. Then I can take a light, a medium, and a heavy pass to deepen that score. Here I mark out the front edge of my dado. To begin chiseling, start just inside of your knife wall so that you don't bruise the material that's going to be left there. Keep chiseling away with your bevel pointed towards the waist side, slowly working your way away from your knife line, making sure at all times that your chisel is perpendicular. When your dado is about half of its total width, now you can take the board that is going to be housed inside of it, line it up against the wall that you've established, and mark the other side of it. By doing this, you've created a dado that is perfectly sized for the board. Before finishing the dado, I mark out my ultimate depth of one quarter inch. Now you can finish your dado by working from the other edge, just like we did before. Don't worry about getting a perfectly flat bottom. We'll address that in a moment. When you're nearly at your ultimate depth, you can come in with a smaller chisel and pare out the waste at the bottom. This will give you a nice clean floor. Alternatively, if you have a router plane, or build your own, then that's the perfect tool for getting a clean bottom to a precise depth. At this point, I test fit my dado. And in this particular case, you can see I got to clean out the front corners a tiny bit, but it's pretty darn close. I also label these pieces at this point because they were custom fit to each other. I want to make sure I don't get mixed up with other joints.
For the layout on the notch, I turn the upright around backwards in the dado and then use my marking knife to mark along the back edge. For the depth, I use my marking gauge because it's still set to the depth of the dado. So now I deepen my line, create the traditional knife wall, and cut down to my next mark ever so carefully. To cut with the grain, we can use a chisel. Here I take a test cut just to check the grain direction, make sure it's not going to split back into the important part. And then I can move closer to my line and then one last little pairing to shave off that last hair at the end. Finally, I clean up the shoulder with my chisel as well, referencing off my knife line. Don't forget to break the edges on your stock after planting it flat. See that? That stops it from splintering. splintering. I don't want bruises easy either as a very sharp corner would. Repeat those dados and notches three more times and then you can put your frame together. One thing I did notice at this time is that the frame needed a little more stability laterally. So there's a couple ways of accomplishing that. We'll tackle that next. For the support in the back of the frame, I've decided to go ahead and just use a bit of plywood. I like the French cleat idea, but it involves a half-blind dovetail to tie it in here. I suppose you could just do it with a mortise, a tenon too. thought that might be a little more complicated, so we're going to go with the plywood. To mount the plywood in here, instead of just putting it you know, on the back, tacked in with finish nails or whatever, we're going to make a little rabbit all the way around here. These side pieces will go the entire length and then the bottom and the top will go between these housing dados and those will be our stops, act as our stops, which is really ideal. I set my marking gauge to the thickness of the plywood and put a mark on this board as my depth stop. Because this rabbit isn't going to be cut all the way from one end to the other, we can't use a plane because the fence would ride up on the ends. Now to clean this up, you can just use a chisel to pare out the waste. or you can use a router plane. But if you do that, be really careful not to lean it over the side as you don't have a very large reference space. There we go. You can see where I went just a wee bit deep, a couple spots. But it'll all be covered up by the plywood. For the vertical pieces, because there's no interruption, I can use my combination plane.
plywood will be sitting in there just like that. Perfect match. Now we'll repeat on the other uh, two pieces. So here's what it looks like with the finished dado for the plywood. Now we're going to measure top to bottom, side to side, figure out exactly how big our plywood's going to be. Might go like a pencil width bigger because after we've cut with the saw, we're going to fine tune it with the plane. If you look back through my video archive, you'll see that last year, 2017, my hand tool build off entry was a panel marking gauge. If you make one of those or you happen to have one of those, this is the perfect device for marking out our plywood. Now when you're working with plywood, one of the things to remember is you're always cutting against the grain because every layer's got a different orientation. Now in this case, for what I would call a rip cut, we're going with the face, we're keeping the face nice and pretty, not a concern. But now, for this cut, I'm going to make our normal knife wall. Just to try and preserve the face veneer of the plywood. You see how that didn't tear out real bad there? I'm a little bit proud of my line, but that knife line stopped any tear out. Now we'll test fit our plywood. and fine-tune everything with the hand plane. We're going to also make sure we check our frame for square frequently because we don't want to end up with a parallelogram instead of a rectangle. When you plane plywood, pay attention to the grain of the, the veneer. Set your plane really fine and when you're working with the grain like this, everything will be just fine. When you're working across the grain of the veneer, establish a little knife wall that will interrupt the tear out. Also, it helps sometimes to angle your plane ever so slightly. Finally, I round off the corners because the very point will be your first hang up if things aren't perfectly square. And there's our completed frame. Please stay tuned for part two where we build the door. Thanks for watching.